Today's Bible study is titled, A Form of Godliness. The Apostle Paul, nearing the time when he would be executed in Rome for his faith, in an excerpt of 2 Timothy 3, wrote to Timothy, his son in the faith, saying, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1, Thomas 2 and 5. As we consider this excerpt, we can ask and answer, What and when are in the last days? This refers to a time just before the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, Romans 11, verse 25. A time we are told will be perilous for believers. Example, they may go the way of those afterward, described if not on guard. In fact, Paul goes on to write in what is 2 Timothy 3, verse 2 to 4, a long laundry list of the terrible behaviors that will be consistent of people, questionable believers, at that time, primarily because these will be lovers of their own selves, and this will manifest in the evil typically associated with selfishness. The real curveball comes when Paul wraps up the list of evil behavioral tendencies, saying that these people will be found having a form of godliness. Whoa, wait a minute. This sounds like he is describing people that at least say that they are seekers of God and his godliness, you know, so-called believers. But we are told that These with a form of godliness are also those that will be denying the power thereof. So here are those that only claim to be believers or those that, while they are believers, apparently do not know their true identity in Christ. If this doesn't come close to describing the times in which we live today, then it could easily discourage believers. Example, thinking that it could actually get worse. But then there is the ultimate statement of Paul regarding these that lay claim but seemingly lack substance, as he says, from such turn away. Paul does this knowing that believers running with false or insincere believers can only result in harm, and for insincere believers, this loss of fellowship may just turn them to reconsider their choices. Fortunately, we are given the prescriptive and preventative remedy for such in two other key verses of N.D. Timothy. 1. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verses 15 to 17 and 2. Next and critical to the first being understandable, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2 verse 15. With the word of God in hand, a commitment to being a spirit-led student of the word, and a further commitment to learn right division of the word. Believers can avoid the pitfalls of denying the true power of God in their lives. And a believer does this by learning that all of the word is for him, but not all is directed to him as his rule of faith and practice. And this is an incredibly important truth to learn if we would receive the message that God would have us know today. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.